Hello everyone, <clears throat> it's me, Uncle John. Today I am going to read S4 4024 Wild Horses by George Edward Stanley. Chapter 1 Wild Horses of the Past. Scritch, scratch, scritch. The caveman makes marks on a rock. Wall with a bun stick. He's drawing a picture, a picture of an animal he saw. The caveman looks at what's he done. He frowns, he adds more marks. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. He steps back and looks again. Now it looks like the animal. The caveman didn't know the name of what he had drawn. But 15,000 years later, French hikers found the cave. They knew what the animal was. The caveman had drawn a wild horse. Long before people walked the earth, horses roamed here, but they didn't look the same as they do now. During the time of dinosaurs, horses looked like a small dog. Over millions of years, horses changed. Their legs got longer, their heads got bigger, the toes grew together into hooves. Six million years ago, horses finally reached the size of most horses today. Back then, all horses were wild. But in time, people came along. At first, they probably hunted horses. Maybe they ate them for food. Maybe they made clothing from horse skin. After a while, people started to look at horses in a different way. Horses seemed smart. They could help. The people in Asia were the first ones to tame horses. They used horses to pull chariots. The chariots carried the soldiers into battle. Later on, people put saddles and bridles on horses. They rode horses where chariots couldn't go. Soon, people in other parts of the world picked up the idea. They started taming horses. They started breeding them too. These horses won wild. They were raised to carry people, but there were still wild horses all over the world. They never pulled a wagon. They never wore a saddle or a bridle. They never even felt the touch of a human being. This is the story of those wild horses. Chapter 2 Wild Horses of France The marshes in the south of France are not an easy place to live. During summer, the sun bakes the earth until it cracks. During winter, a thin sheet of icy water covers the land. But in this harsh setting live the Camarge. The Camarge are the wild, wild horses of France. Camarge's coat is white and silky. It looks like sea foam. This horse may be beautiful, but it's hardy too. It eats many salt grasses and, and reeds. Most Camarge are still wild, but some are ridden by French cowboys. French cowboys? Yes. These cowboys take care of the black cattle that live in this part of France. French cowboys are called Galdiens. Galdiens. They use horsehair ropes and large three-pronged forks to keep the cattle in order. Back in the uh, 1800s, France owned Louisiana. Uh, Galdiens came to Louisiana to watch over the cattle. After Louisiana became part of the United States, uh, some Galdiens headed west. They used their skills to capture and tame the wild horses there. Most people think of cowboys as American, 
But in a way, the first cowboys were actually French. Chapter 3 Wild Horses of the Islands An island may seem like a funny place to find wild horses. After all, how does a horse get on an island? No one knows for sure. Some horses may have swum to islands from wrecked ships. Other horses may have been left behind by all the explorers. We do know how horses got to a Assateague Island. They were stranded there. This island was once linked to the mainland by skinny strips of land. Then in 1933, a fierce storm washed away the land. Assateague turned into an island. Today, Assateague and its neighbor island, uh, Chincoteague, are home to about 200 horses. Most of them live on Assateague. Assateague is now a national park. For many years, the horses lived without any help from people, but they weren't very healthy. They drank salt water from the ocean. Sometimes they even ate poison ivy. Things got worse for the horses in 1943. Part of Astatig was fenced off for wild birds. The horses lost a lot of the land where they grazed. They had to stay in only one section of the island. It was small. It was mar marshy. Thousands of biting insects bothered them all summer, and the horses had no way to get to the sea. In 1947, Margaret Henry wrote a book called The uh, Misty of Chincoteague. It was about two, two kids who earned money to buy Phantom, the wildest of mare on Assateague Island, and her cult Misty. The book was a big success. Until then, hardly anyone outside Virginia knew about these wild horses. In 1961, a movie was made of the book. Soon, people all over America sent money to help the wild horses. In 1962, there was another big storm. Because the horses were trapped on a small part of the island, many drowned. All the people who fell in love with the horses from the Misty, Misty book got angry after that. The horses were no longer fenced off. The most famous wild horses in the world could run free again, but the islands are not very big. They can, own, they can support only a couple of hundred horses. So each July, the Chincoteague Fire Department has the horses swim from Assateague to uh, Chincoteague. Some of the extra folds and earlings are sold to happy owners. The ponies can be trained for kids to ride, and the money from the sales helps take care of the rest of the herds. Chapter 4 Wild Horses of the Mountains Wild horses have been living in the mountains between Spain and France. For thousands of years. In winter, the mountains are covered with snow and ice. The temperature drops below freezing for long periods of time. How can a horse live in such a place? The wild mountain horses have a thick winter coat. They have a heavy mane, heavy mane and tail to protect them from the cold. It's no problem for them to climb the steep mountain trails. Even when the trails are covered with ice and snow, mountain horses love cold weather, but they can't stand it when it's hot. During summer, they spend most of their time huddled in the shade of the thick pine forest. Sometimes, mountain horses are captured and used to smuggle guns and drugs across the mountains. If the smugglers are caught by the police, they are sent to prison but the horses are set free to roam wild in the mountains again. Chapter 5 Wild Horses of the Misty Moors The XDX Moor is the only wild horse left in Great Britain. It lives mainly in a national park. The X Moor has changed very little over time. Several years ago, the bones of a two million year old horse were found in Alaska. Scientists compared them to an Axmoor skeleton. They were almost the same. 
The Exmoor looks different from many horses today. It has a bigger head than other horses. And the Exmoor has hooded eyes. The hooves protect its eyes from wind, rain, and snow. The moors in Great Britain are like the prairies in America. They have miles and miles of tall grass. The moors get a lot of rain. In winter, it can be extremely cold and there is always a lot of snow. But this doesn't bother the Exmoor. It's not true really that longer than other horses. The cold air the Exmoor breathes is warmed before it gets to the lungs. If the Exmoors feel threatened, all the adult horses make a circle around the foals to keep them safe. The herd stallion defends the herd. It lashes out with its teeth. It slashes at the enemies with its front hooves. But there are some enemies the Exmoor can fight. The future of the Exmoor in Great Britain is not very bright. Scientists think it's hard for them to breathe away from the moors. The land where these horses live is being used for houses and business centers. Soon, without its moors, the Exmoor may become extinct. Chapter 6 Wild Horses of Mongolia. In 1879, the uh, col colonel, colonel, the colonel, and the Imperial Russian Army went to Mongolia. His job was to make a map of the area for the Russian government. He set up camp at the edge of the Gobi Desert. Nearby was a mountain range that the uh, local people called the uh, Mountains of the Yellow Horses. Only one morning, the colonel heard a thunder of pounding hooves. The sound was coming from the mountain. He ran out of his tent to see what it was. In a few minutes, the colonel saw hundreds of horses racing across the desert sand. They looked like yellow zebra, but they weren't zebra. They were Mongolian wild horses. No one outside of Mongolia had ever seen these horses. The colonel was very excited. With help from some of the local people, the colonel cut several of the horses. He took them back to Russia. They were at, they were let out on a large estate. People from all over Russia came to see them. They fell in love with the funny looking yellow horses. While the Russians adored the horses, the people in Mongolia kept hunting the Mongolian wild horse for its meat and its skin. Soon, the zoo was almost the only place to see the horses. The Jews kept the Mongolian wild horse from becoming extinct. In the past few years, some horses have been set free on the land where they used to live. They are having babies, new horses born wild. Maybe someday, the yellow zebra will thunder across the old mountains again. Unit 7, Wild Horses of the Outback. Before 1788, Australia had no horses, but then people from England and South Africa settled there. They brought their horses with them. In 1851, gold was discovered in the outback of Australia. Many miners used the horses to carry their food and equipment, but some of these horses strayed from the mining town. Uh, they ran wild in the rough, scrubbed country. The Australians called these horses brumbies. The brumbies ate the grass that Australian farmers needed for their cattle. That made the farmers mad. They shot the brumbies for sport. By the, by the 1960s, there were so many brumbies, the Australian government decided to get rid of them. Hunters started shooting them from airplane in just one month. Over 17,000 Brumbies were killed. People all over the world got angry about this. The shootings stopped. Now, the tough and wary Brumbies once again live in the outback in large numbers. But many people in Australia don't like the Brumbies. Brumbies can really be used for anything. Some people are still trying to find ways to get rid of them. Chapter 8. Wild Horses of the American West 
Imagine the Wild West. What do you think of? Pioneers, cowboys, wild horses. The wild horses of the West are called Mustang. Mustang comes from the Spanish word Mestenio. Mestenio means a horse that has escaped or strayed from the range and become wild. Mustang. In the 1500s, Spanish conquerors brought horses to America. Some ran away from their owners. They became the Mustangs. At first, Native Americans feared the Spanish horses. They thought Mustangs were gods with strong powers. Then the Spanish men went away. The horses were left behind. That's when Native Americans started riding them. The horses made hunting easier. A fine horse even became a sign of wealth. A few years later, a French guardian headed west from Louisiana. They were followed by woodsmen from Kentucky, Tennessee, and North Carolina. And finally, Mexican herdsmen came up north from Mexico. They all met on the Great Plains and became American cowboys. They used mustangs to herd cattle to market. By the middle of the 1800s, there were but 3 million mustangs in the West. But before long, the Wild West wasn't so wild anymore. The gold rush ended. Native Americans were moved to reservations, and most cowboys were seen only in rodeos. The mustangs had their problems too. In the 40s, 1940, hunters began killing these horses and turning them into pet food. By 1970, there were fewer than 20,000 Mustangs left. When the American people found out, they were horrified. They made the government stop the hunters. Now the Mustangs are protected. The herds have begun to grow again. You can see them running free in Colorado, Nevada, and Wyoming. Chapter 9, Wild Horses Today and tomorrow, a small band of wild horses grazes peacefully on the slopes of a mountain. Suddenly, the herd stallion whinnies. It's time to look for water. The stallion lifts his head. He flares his nostrils. He gallops to the rear of the herd and begins to drive the horses down the mountain. Dust flies and rocks clatter. With pounding hooves and snorting breath, the herd rushes toward the sparkling river below. Fifty years ago, it was hard to find a place where horses ran wild. In Asia, in Australia, and in America, wild horses were in danger. Hunters killed them for pet food. Farmers and ranchers killed them because they ate the cattle's grass. But then something wonderful happened. Ordinary people put an end to it. They told their governments that they wanted to save the wild horses. Why did they care? Why do people love wild horses so much? Maybe it's because people see themselves in the horses. Wild horses have no masters. No one rides them. No one fences them up at night. Wild horses are free. The end.